G'day everyone. <coughs> Excuse the uh, the voice. I've got a bit of a cold. I think I caught it when I was at the uh, consulate getting my uh, my paperwork done for the U.S. Anyway, um, this is a super quick one. I don't know why, but uh, I mentioned on YouTube that my laptop power supply cable had broken. As you can see here, the the metal connector -y bit came out of the the boot strand relief boot it's been like this for ages I like it's been loose for a while I knew it was gonna fail eventually and it just failed as always things break at the last minute when you're packing anyway um, for some reason I mentioned on Twitter and Tim said well why don't you make a video of you fixing it um, maybe he thought I would have to fix the laptop end of things which would be far more exciting soldering together two wires is oh, well there'll be a little bit of mechanical work obviously getting into here but uh, well all right fine here's a video um, first order of the day is we have to make some space on the bench as you can see I've been uh, less than neat of late and I still have a heck of a lot of crap up here so let's make a few square inches of maybe one two square foot <laughs> of space <coughs> to work in solder soldering iron on and some H2O that I have here in a wash bottle for wetting my sponge. I know people say that uh, you should use the metal fibery version. Um, the, you know, it's kind of like steel wool to, to clean the tip of your iron and it probably does make the tip last longer because it doesn't put water on there which tends not to oxidize it as much but you know what? Whatever. I use water. Always use water. It does a pretty darn good job. That's actually not true. I have on occasion used the, the metal um, versions of the tip cleaners but water works for me okay so probably sounds like urination my apologies sponge suitably wettened the uh, soldering iron is over there somewhere <coughs> this incredibly crude lash up that I've got here on my tripod and I'll probably hit it with my chair but yeah oh well this isn't a very serious video so this power supply is according to the the labelling here, tip positive, um, 18.5 volts at almost 5 amps. It's a fairly gutsy little power supply for an e-machines laptop. Interestingly, it's got the, uh, the what do they call it, the um, three-lift clover connector rather than an IEC connector, but there's an adapter that goes into that that then adapts it to the, the two-pin jug pluggy style connector, which I have no idea. It's a Siemens connector? Or, yeah, doesn't really matter. Anyway, that end of things is fine and always has been fine. It's actually a pretty good universal power supply, it's never given me any problems. It's quite quiet as well, unlike many of these switch mode power supplies. Alright. So, it says 90 watts here, which is yeah, about right if you do the math. The, uh, the ferrite bit is glued onto the cables, so that's kind of a, a limiting factor. I don't think I can push it along. It wasn't clamped on or anything like that, so I'm kind of stuck. It looks like it was injection molded in place. There's some sprues here that suggest that's how it was made. Uh, actually, that label has always annoyed me, but I've never bothered to take it off. If I could push the boot down a little bit, and uh, but it looks like it was also injection molded around the connector. So maybe our, uh, <coughs> our solution will be to find some heat shrink, rip this boot off, fix up what is probably coax, I imagine, inside the lead, and solder it back onto this guy here, tip positive style. Well, that's the theory, and I imagine the coax is similarly, the coaxial power will line inside similarly with the center conductor being the, the positive side, but I'll check it with the multimeter before I put it back in and plug it into the laptop. Alright, soldering iron is at temperature, so let's uh, <coughs> let's just brute force it and chop the damn plug off. I guess, and uh, See if we can fix it. Well, is there some heat shrink around here somewhere? I always have problems finding my heat shrink. I never, you know, I don't use it frequently enough that I have, have it put somewhere sane, like right in front of me. And then when I need it, I'm almost fighting going through stuff looking for it. Oh well. Just chop it up here in the actual boot so I've got a bit more cable length. Okay, so, yeah, it's a coaxial, I don't know if this thing will focus up here well enough, but, yeah, sort of. You can see there it's a coaxial kind of cable, as most of these laptop power connectors are. <clears throat> hey, I can take that damn label off. 
I mean, I could have cut it off, but that's cheating. Now I got all that greasy crap to. I got some isopropyl all around here somewhere I could use to clean that, but you know what? Meh, whatever. Alright, I'm gonna cheat and use. Oh, where the heck is all my tools? Half of my tools. I had started doing a cleanup, so half of my tools are not where they should be, and the other half are all put away, so. As usual, uh, that's why this is why I keep my desk in this mess. I know where everything is. When I, uh, whenever I have a clean up, I can never find anything ever again. So I'm going to try and use a knife to uh, to do the bearing of the wires here, which is you know a relatively trivial exercise. You just try not to nick the center conductor, which I the conductor which I always manage to do, and always end up having to fix it. Um, there's a thousand better ways to do it than this. But whatever. This isn't even a decent pair of dikes. I don't know where my other ones are. Alright. <clears throat> I know, it, I call these like side cutters or diagonal pliers. I know some people call them dikes. I've always called them side cutters, but I'm kind of getting used to calling them dikes, I guess. Probably American influence. Diagonal cutters. I don't know. They cut and they cut close. That's all I want. I don't really care what the name is terribly, as long as we understand each other. I wonder if I can tin this. That looks very dull. Anyway, we'll find out. <coughs> and the center conductor now. Center conductor's kind of rubbery almost. It's pretty easy to peel though. Alrighty, uh, let's have some lead tin solder, none of that bloody lead free crap. OHS be damned. ROHS is uh, one of the more annoying things to have happened to electronics, particularly when you have things like cadmium sulfide, right? Things that, that there really aren't a heck of a lot of. Uh, other options for that are now getting very rare. So uh, I re I recently bought a box of some uh, cadmium sulfide cells because I was kind of afraid that they were uh, they were going to become unobtainable. I don't think they make them anymore. So you can see here I got some Hamatsu thingy jiggers. There um, there's a thousand in here that should last me for a while thinking one thing I might do with them is make up, uh, oh, I can't remember what the name of it was, one, in the Triple Fives contest there was a bloke who had one of those, a uh, whole bunch of end-to-end -end connected um, Triple Five monostables that were being triggered by cadmium sulfide cell photo detectors and you could, uh, what was the name of it, that was really one of the awesome projects, I, I thought, well I mean it did get a prize on it, it well and truly deserved it, anyway, um, I was thinking about using these to make that, although if I made them myself I'd probably come up with a circuit that used a little less current. Um, actually, I was thinking about doing it with LEDs. Anyway, one of these years. <laughs> one of those things I'll probably never get around to. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Once it's the same length, yeah. I should really put some spaghetti or heat shrink around that. What I might do is wrap some Kapton tape around it for now. And then when I find a bit of heat shrink, probably after I turn the video off and because I have a feeling that the heat shrink is probably over there in a bag over there. When I do that, I'll, uh, I'll heat shrink it properly. So, um, things have been pretty busy. I've spent most of today going around in the attic, um, the, in the, <coughs> the plenum actually, outside the attic, Trying to find uh, what I believe is some kind of creature has died up here, maybe a rat or something like that. I, I thought I could smell some cadaverine or putrescine earlier. And uh, I've noted a few blowflies around the place. When I went out there, I, I turned on the fluorescent light that I've got fixed out there, and a whole bunch of uh, blowflies found their way to it. Um, I didn't know that species was attracted by it, but I guess they are. And uh, I, uh, I killed them all with some, with some spray, but I went through the roof, I couldn't find the source, and it doesn't smell particularly bad, like, it actually smells less out there. So what I think's happened is I think the uh, the darn thing has died possibly in the cavity in the in the wall. We have nine inch cavity walls here and um, 
the former, I assume it was a rat, maybe it was a bird or something like that, is uh, decaying away in the wall and um, probably these are first generation blowflies, they look pretty healthy, um, that have just hatched out of the, out of um, pupate, you know, pupating on the dead body, but anyway, I just took off the dead bit of wire there, I'm, fortunately I'm because I'm doing the center conductor first, I can hold it. Now, what would be really handy is if I had helping hands or something like that to hold this while I solder it. I'm going to uh, be lazy and not find them. I did have a chunk of blue tack here at one point. <clears throat> anyway, let's just add a little solder to that. And... around a bit. This, by the way, if you're looking at this to be an instructional video of how you should do this, you definitely should not do it this way. Everything about this is a bad idea. I'm just being lazy because I want to fix it quickly. And, I don't know, I guess this is kind of a blog, me doing something uh, while I talk to you about random crap. Alright, that's not too bad. What I probably should have done, and I will do, and I'll just unsort that again, and I'll shorten that center conductor a bit, so that I don't have to reach so bad, so much with the outer shieldy bit. Ah, come on. Melt, you bastard. Sometimes it helps, i found, this is a general soldering tip, if you, uh, A, use a bit more heat, I've got this only on about 320, let's give it about 350, because there's much more thermal load with these large pieces of metal than there is when you're doing a board. It helps if you've got a little bit of solder there to help um, just as a melt pool to exchange the heat into the thing. See? Much easier when you do that. Alright, so let's trim that back a little bit. Like thus. Yeah, you should protect your eyes when you cut things like that. Again, I'm showing you how you shouldn't do it, so you'll <laughs> you won't do it that way, right? Okay. Well, you probably can't see a damn thing either because of the position that I've got the camera in. But oh well. I think Tim was half joking. I may or may not upload this. If I guess if you're watching it, I did upload it. surface tension of the solder is kind of cool. It's one of those things that kind of lets you manipulate objects that aren't really balanced. The uh, ghetto guide to soldering, I guess you could call this. Alright, it's not too bad. Focus, damn you! There. That'll do. Alright, let's find us some dodgy form of insulator. Uh, on tape for the win. That'll do. This is uh, looks like five millimeter wide capped on tape. Yes, scissors would be a better utility. Who cares? Start back there a bit. wrap up the general area there. Capped on tape is super useful stuff for many th projects. I recommend you get some. It used to be very very expensive. Now thanks to China's efforts in manufacturing everything on the goddamn planet as cheaply as possible. It is uh, it is now quite acceptably priced and readily available on uh, on YouTube on uh, YouTube on <laughs> on eBay or uh, or Deal Extreme too. Actually, Deal Extreme has quite a lot, but uh, the, you can get almost every kind of size imaginable, from this really thin stuff up to you know ridiculously massive stuff like this for uh, it's useful for 3D printers and other. And it, it looks like copper, doesn't it? But uh, no. Great stuff, uh, polyamide. Alright, so, that's dodgy as hell, but it'll do for now. And let's just do the outer connector a little bit. 
you know what, I'm not going to... I was going to hold this with a tool, you know what, I'm just going to risk burning myself and do it the old fashioned way. Let's get some solder on there so I can actually get some heat. Get the old decrepit crap off there, which is all the bits of conductor that were in there where it broke. And uh, a good blob of solder. There, done. One thing about this particular Ouch, as <laughs> it's still a bit hot. Um, one thing about this particular capped on tape is that it is a fairly poor adhesive. It's some kind of silicon, silicone, that is, with an E, um, based resin um, tape. I imagine it's just some kind of long chain silicon, silicone that uh, is a bit sticky. I don't know exactly how they bond it to the amide, but it'd be interesting. Maybe someone can tell me. But... <sighs> One of those people, what was the name of it? Epidisophiliac or something? People that like collector of useless knowledge, that's... So I would like to know. That's not useless knowledge, obviously if you ever had to bond something to amide and it was a silicone, it could be useful to know. Alright. So, where the heck is my heat shrink? Oh, I think I would have it here somewhere, wouldn't you? Uh, every time I use it, I put it away and I say I'm definitely going to put it away carefully so the next time I can find it. And I never do. Alrighty, well I'm pretty sure that's that's what you'd call fixed for now. I mean obviously I need to insulate a little better than that. But uh, omically I'm sure it's fine. What I will do though is I will just check that the uh, that it is in fact wired the way I believed it was. I didn't bother to cut up the, uh, the old plug. I very much doubt that it would be anything other than how you would naturally expect it to be wired up, but you never know. So it doesn't hurt to spend two seconds with the multimeter just to make sure that it wasn't screwed up. And of course it's one of those recessed plugs that's bloody hard to get into, so we just shove a bit of solder in it. And what are you saying? You're having issues because you're not loaded properly? Why are you having issues? Stupid switch modes. Many switch modes have issues if they're not loaded very well. This one is clearly one of those. 18.82 volts. Fair enough. Close enough. If I loaded it down it would probably be closer to whatever it's actually regulated to. Alright. Uh, well. I hope you enjoyed that, complete not a waste of time. <laughs> um, wow, 18 minutes to solder a plug on a bit of wire and yak, That's uh, that's got to be a record. Alrighty, see you all later, bye.